Alright, I've made a list of connections between Elden Ring and Dark Souls, such as the fire prelate being a nod to Smo, and the return of a giant blacksmith, which doesn't really turn out too well. Although there are some cool connections that are definitely not intentional, such as Combat Azur, which is a reskin of the Soul Stream, and the likely evolution of the Asylum Demon from Dark Souls to Dark Souls 3 to now Elden Ring. It's cool. Throughout the game, you can actually find references to previous bosses. The Omen Killer and his two dogs are referencing the Capra Demon, who notoriously is also paired with two dogs. There's a group of Silver Tears wielding shields that are basically Phalanx from Demon Souls, which also appeared in Dark Souls 1. And I mean, come on, the Valiant Gargoyle duo are the Bell Gargoyles from DS1. We also get to see some cool mechanics return. In Elden Ring, dying to an abductor virgin teleports you to another area. This happened with Seath, who sent you to a prison, and the Snatcher, who also sent you to a prison once again. Also, I mean, we have to mention Patches, who actually breaks the fourth wall. As you know, he appears in almost every From Software game, including Armored Core. Now in Elden Ring, after you defeat him and decide to not forgive, he'll say, This simply isn't like you. Which is weird, since we haven't met him yet. He also has some meta lines, such as, it's the same old story everywhere I go. Plus, his name is Patches the Untethered. And how can I not mention that the iconic kick is back? The polished catacombs we encounter actually started out as this weird mess of the chalice dungeons in Bloodborne. Both have a boss presented early, and you need to navigate your way to a lever to unlock the fight. The Scarabs are now the new Crystal Lizards, but in Rei Lucaria, you can actually find these Crystal Crabs that must be killed in order to acquire an item, and I can't help but think that this is a reference to the Crystal Lizards in Dark Souls. Now we get to find the spiritual successor to Siegmire and Siegward, which is Lionel, and I'm glad they brought back the iconic armor in any way. One of my favorite themes makes a return, which are the Arch Trees. In almost every game, they feature these gigantic pillars, and it's even better that they make their return in the final boss arena. And actually, most of their final boss arenas feature gorgeous flower fields, and although Melania is an optional boss, it still holds the theme. The game also features new types of chests, and they actually have a nice callback to the original ones in Dark Souls with the chain and everything. Another reoccurrence are the basilisks, they're in most of their games, and I don't know why they're back but they did include their tiny eyes though. One item I'm glad came back is the pizza cutter from Bloodborne, and I'm not surprised as it's just kind of really fun. An NPC and invader from Dark Souls reappears, named Anastasia the Tarnished Eater, and in most of their games there's always a cannibalistic woman who wields a butcher knife or axe, which I believe originally started from Meralda in Demon Souls. Another tradition is the Moonlight Greatsword, which has appeared in every Dark Souls game except Sekiro. Arena, as we know, is blind, and has escaped Castle Morn. Well, weirdly enough, Arena of Kareem in Dark Souls 3 is also blind. As well as that, she's being guarded by a knight who is wearing Morn's armor and using Morn's great hammer. It's a cool reference within the names. Also, if you liked the video, subscribe. Now, Ensha seems to be the evolution of the Dark Wraiths from Dark Souls. Within their games, you can encounter the same enemy and then acquire the Dark Set. To me, it seems that his armor is the next step from the trilogy, and a little homage. We also get to see the third edition of the weird 3D painted shield, which has appeared in Demon Souls and DS3. You can tell they're connected as they all restore HP. Another returning mechanic, weirdly enough, are coffins being used as a mode of transportation, which was in two of their other games. Also, why not mention the Red Wolf of Radagon feels a lot like Sif, and how once again our hub gets set on fire, just like Bloodborne. But hopefully you liked the video, and thanks to everyone who commented on my post. I'll see ya!